you got to make it do it because you don't want to look at the jab. So if I be jabbing, you don't try to get in there right before. Mike Tyson explodes in fury at Evander Holyfield for coaching Jake Paul in preparation to face him. The impending showdown between Mike Tyson and Jake Paul is not only reigniting historic moments but also stirring up more controversy than anticipated. Scheduled for July 20th, this matchup is not just bringing back the baddest man on the planet to the boxing ring, but also resurrecting a long-standing feud that seemed to have been put to rest between Mike Tyson and Evander Holyfield. Mike Tyson was taken aback and deeply disappointed by Evander Holyfield's choice to train his upcoming opponent for the highly awaited July 20th showdown. Numerous clips featuring Jake Paul and the former world heavyweight champion have been circulating online. In these videos, Holyfield is seen imparting boxing lessons and techniques to Jake Paul, offering instructions and guidance while the young boxer listens intently. So stay ready, y'all gonna get ready. Stay ready. Yeah. That's, that's the whole thing. That's, yeah. that's the truth you all. You, you'll never get out of shape. You ain't got to worry about getting in. Yeah. However, Mike Tyson's response has been one of fury, reminiscent of the infamous night in June 1997. Despite the passage of time and numerous changes, nostalgia often crept in, prompting many to revisit the bygone era. These two individuals, renowned for their infamous and contentious bout in 1997, had long buried the hatchet, forging a positive relationship in the years following the conclusion of their respective careers. However, a recent development in Evander Holyfield's actions threatens to unravel the hard-earned bond they painstakingly constructed through years of effort and forgiveness. Discussing their relationship, their well-known reconciliation was broadcast numerous years ago, and since then, prosperity has blossomed for both champions. In his apologies, Tyson expressed, This individual and I, we both essentially originated from humble beginnings, and we witnessed each other's journey to become renowned and respected fighters. I simply want you to understand that it has been a gratifying journey to have crossed paths in this life. In an unexpected turn of events, Mike Tyson and Evander Holyfield seem poised to reignite their historic rivalry despite retiring from the ring. Holyfield's announcement of his role as Jake Paul's trainer for the upcoming July 20th match against Tyson has sparked Tyson's sharp retorts and disheartening accusations. Tyson's remarks, drawing parallels to their iconic bout 27 years ago, hint at the potential for another intense showdown between the two legendary boxers, even outside the ring. According to him, he believed that everything had been resolved between himself and his former rival after he offered sincere apologies both privately and publicly for the infamous ear-biting incident. However, his recent comments reflected a sense of feeling betrayed and deceived. Tyson expressed his disillusionment, stating, I always anticipate the worst outcome, but I never imagined that our actions were merely for show. People reveal their true selves in unexpected ways. It's not even in the shadows yet, but I'm beginning to see the true colors of Holyfield. It's beyond my understanding. Tyson persistently persists in making assumptions. He suggests Holyfield desires his downfall because of his past struggles against Viter Belfort, which is hardly Tyson's fault. However, if this is his peculiar way of showing concern, so be it. Tyson is uncertain if he's attempting to justify his actions. Moving forward, Tyson directs some sharper remarks at Holyfield. He said, To me, he seems like a bewildered elder striving to regain prominence. That's where our paths diverge. He exited the boxing scene and is now barely remembered while I continue to command attention even after 19 years. Moreover, Tyson believes that Holyfield's true colors have surfaced, confirming some of these speculations about his sly nature. It's disheartening to say the least, yet Tyson remains unfazed. He said, I'd prefer not to divulge certain confidential matters in public, but I'm well aware of Holyfield's sentiments toward me. Rumors have circulated about his opinions, though I typically take such hearsay with a grain of salt. Tyson further tarnished Holyfield's reputation by reminiscing about their past encounters, particularly poking fun at his inability to last beyond a round in their exhibition match against Viter Belfort. Discussing Holyfield's training session before the renowned exhibition match, 
Tyson callously likened his speed to that of a snail. It's quite humorous how Jake Paul, in his attempt to train for me, ends up with someone who can barely stand in the ring for a minute. If you witnessed Holyfield's last bout, you'd understand. His punches resemble the sluggish movement of a snail. It's baffling that Paul would choose such a backward approach. This lethargy seems contagious, and Tyson can't help but feel sorry for him. If this is how he plans to face Iron Mike, he's in for a rough time. Tyson's words tore Holyfield apart, claiming he would not only defeat Jake Paul, but also leave his cornermen, including Evander Holyfield, with a bitter taste of defeat. Finally, Mike Tyson pointed out to Holyfield the reality of their shared losses and cautioned Jake Paul not to be swayed solely by Holyfield's two victories over him. Both Holyfield and Tyson had experienced defeats, and Tyson wanted to remind both Holyfield and Paul of that fact. He emphasized that Holyfield wasn't invincible, having suffered six losses himself. Tyson warned that whatever led to Holyfield's losses could also lead to Jake Paul's downfall. On July 20th, Tyson planned to commemorate Holyfield's first ever loss, which occurred against Riddick Bowe. Holyfield, once the world's top contender, faced Buster Douglas in his first title defense after upsetting Tyson eight months prior. This history served as a reminder that setbacks are a part of every fighter's journey, including Jake Paul's. Holyfield secured victory over a visibly unfit Douglas, sealing his fate with a third-round knockout. This triumph marked his fourth defense across three titles. Prior to this bout, he faced George Foreman, the former champion vying to reclaim his title as the oldest heavyweight champion. Despite Foreman's efforts, Holyfield emerged victorious via a unanimous decision. Subsequently, a showdown with Tyson was on the cards for 1991, yet Tyson withdrew due to injury. Undeterred, Holyfield faced off against Burt Cooper, facing adversity with his first career knockdown. However, he displayed resilience, staging a comeback to knock out the underdog. Despite the excitement, the WBC refused to recognize the bout as a title fight. Plans for a Holyfield-Tyson encounter were dashed when Tyson was convicted of rape and subsequently incarcerated in early 1992, putting the much-anticipated showdown on indefinite hold. Holyfield sought a challenger for his undisputed championship, and Riddick Bowe, undefeated, emerged as the prime candidate. His manager, Rock Newman, and Holyfield's manager, Shelley Finkel, nearly sealed the deal post-Tyson's conviction. However, financial disagreements led to the collapse of negotiations. Bo eventually secured a contender match against Pierre Coetzer, triumphing in the seventh round by technical knockout. This victory granted him the opportunity to vie for Holyfield's undisputed heavyweight championship. In the summer of 1992, Holyfield opted for a tune-up match against the seasoned former champion Larry Holmes. Despite Holmes being 43 years old, he had garnered six consecutive victories since his only career defeats up to that point, which occurred in his 1985 title loss and 1986 rematch with Michael Spinks as well as his 1988 comeback bout against Tyson. Despite doubts surrounding the match, Holyfield secured another unanimous decision victory against Holmes. However, Holyfield faced criticism for claiming the title from an apathetic Douglas and subsequently defending it against two fighters past their prime, Foreman and Holmes. Additionally, he narrowly avoided being knocked out by the journeyman Cooper, further fueling skepticism surrounding his reign. Now the upcoming opponent for Tyson in an exhibition match parallels the divulgence of top trade secrets. Yet considering Tyson's close bond with Holyfield, this could easily be perceived as a betrayal from Tyson's viewpoint. Despite Tyson's profound respect for Holyfield, he openly confessed his astonishment at Holyfield's victories over him in 1996 and 1997. He said, I used to think he was remarkable, full of admiration and respect for him, but I never imagined he could surpass me. Yet in the first round, I emerged victorious. What truly astounded me about him was the mutual respect shared between us as athletes. Evander Holyfield once revealed how much Tyson inspired him at the onset and throughout his career. Mike's relentless dedication was unmatched. He observed him tirelessly training, never idling. Even when he departed, his work ethic lingered as a testament to his commitment. For a solid three minutes straight, Mike relentlessly pummels that punching bag while others find excuses. Many argue that Mike Tyson, being of small stature with short arms, shouldn't hit as hard as he does, 
Yet Holyfield witnessed Mike overpower opponents towering over him at 6'4", 6'5", and even 6'6", outweighing him by 20 to 30 pounds. He beats them into submission without mercy. Witnessing his feats, Holyfield found newfound inspiration. Feigning injury, he harbored the desire to emulate his ferocity. Even Evander Holyfield, reflecting on the infamous ear-biting incident, acknowledged Mike's unyielding determination. In a different interview, Holyfield offered leniency toward Tyson's inappropriate actions, attributing them to various factors. Yet, he maintained a desire to retaliate, fueled by anger and disappointment. I wanted to bite him back, but I chose not to, affirmed Evander Holyfield. Additionally, Holyfield publicly announced his forgiveness towards Tyson for the infamous biting incident, elaborating on his reasons for such a stance. He said, Life has always been about growth, and for me, forgiveness is paramount. People often wonder how one can forgive such actions, but I remind them that we've all made mistakes. Mike may have bitten me, but I too have been in situations where I've acted out of line. Both fighters may find themselves in favorable circumstances after retiring, Yet there's a palpable notion that Holyfield harbors an interest in re-entering the ring with his former rival. Holyfield himself hasn't dismissed the possibility of facing Tyson once more, albeit in a trilogy format. He emphasizes that it wouldn't be a genuine bout, but rather an opportunity to generate revenue. He states, it's not about fighting, it's about showcasing our skills. We're not aiming to inflict harm on each other. Tyson, however, hasn't hesitated to consider another exhibition bout. The 57-year-old made a comeback in 2020 to face Roy Jones Jr., demonstrating his willingness to step back into the ring. Despite acknowledging that he's past his prime and it won't be as easy anymore, Tyson has always expressed his readiness to get back in shape. Discussing the possibility of an exhibition match with Evander Holyfield, Tyson praised Holyfield as a top-notch individual and a great guy. Reflecting on their previous encounters, including the infamous ear-biting incident in their 1997 rematch, Tyson emphasized that he has already apologized and made amends with Holyfield. Tyson said, If it's a showcase bout, count me in. I'm perpetually prepared. It's not just for me, but for the fans, the excitement it'll generate, and the significant revenue it'll bring. It's going to be an extraordinary event, validating his commitment to action. Recently, he embraced the challenge to step back into the ring, facing someone 31 years his junior. Despite the considerable age difference, he welcomed the challenge with the same fervor he exhibited in the 80s, 90s, and early 2000s. Let's make it happen, Jakey, he remarked when asked about the possibility of a bout with Jake Paul. However, discussions about an exhibition match between Mike Tyson and Evander Holyfield had been ongoing long before the idea of Tyson squaring off against Jake Paul emerged. Despite the official confirmation of the fight between Paul and Tyson, persistent rumors continue to circulate about a potential boxing reunion between Tyson and Holyfield. This speculation persists even in light of their newfound friendship. Holyfield's recent collaboration with Jake Paul preceding his match with Mike Tyson has intensified discussions about the likelihood of Tyson re-entering the ring with his former adversary. Many interpret Holyfield's actions as indicative of his eagerness to be closely involved in the exhibition bout between Paul and Tyson. While this interpretation may not accurately reflect Holyfield's intentions, it underscores the undeniable possibility that cannot be dismissed. With multiple championship titles held between the two pugilists, the prospect of seeing them once again step into the ring together would undoubtedly set hearts racing. A trilogy match holds the promise of transcending into an iconic boxing spectacle, potentially etching its name in the annals of the sport's history. The staggering 1.99 million pay-per-view buys and revenue records shattered during their 1997 rematch serve as a testament to the immense anticipation surrounding another clash. Predicting the astronomical figures a rematch would rake in is a no-brainer. The forthcoming bout between the legendary Mike Tyson and the unconventional Jake Paul is slated for a groundbreaking streaming debut on Netflix. Notably, it marks the inaugural instance of a sporting event being live-streamed on the platform, further underscoring its significance in the realm of sports broadcasting. It's undeniable that both fighters are set to rake in a hefty sum after the bout. Reports indicate that the fight could generate approximately $300 million. Jake Paul himself confirmed this just prior to finalizing the contract, and I must say it's quite exhilarating. 
a $300 million spectacle indeed. Mike, if you happen to catch wind of this, let's make it a thrilling showdown of new school versus old school. It's something the fans have been clamoring for. Of course, the anticipation for the July 20th bout is palpable. Each fighter represents a distinct era, one of the past, the other of the present. If a Tyson versus Paul matchup could draw this much attention and excitement, imagine the frenzy that a Tyson versus Holyfield rematch could generate. These two fighters were absolute titans in their time. In their respective eras, both Tyson and Holyfield remain iconic figures in the boxing world. Their legendary bout in 1997 continues to resonate deeply with boxing enthusiasts, even in 2022. Recently, the two legends reunited, forming an unexpected partnership to endorse a brand. This collaboration harkened back to their infamous encounter 27 years prior, famously known for the biting incident. The journey to this reunion was not without its twists and turns. Initially, attempts to reach out to Holyfield a year ago proved unsuccessful. However, a surprising turn of events occurred when Holyfield himself reached out to Ric Flair, expressing his desire to be involved. With determination and perseverance, Tyson and his team orchestrated the partnership, turning what was once deemed improbable into reality. This unexpected collaboration not only reignited memories of their past rivalry, but also sparked speculation about the potential for a reunion in the boxing ring. If such an event were to materialize, it could very well mirror the unpredictability and excitement that characterized their previous encounters, leaving fans eagerly anticipating what the future holds for these boxing legends. Additionally, Roy Jones Jr. has shared his perspective on what to expect in the upcoming match in Texas this summer. Talking about the fight in a recent interview, Jones said, Jake Paul, how well can he take a punch from a pro? He's been a pro for a little while. Yes, Mike Tyson is 57, but you see the power displayed in bursts in the videos. Jones offers a distinct viewpoint, informed by his direct understanding of how the body and mind align as one nears the age of 60, in contrast to Paul, who, at 27, is probably at the peak of his physical capabilities. Jones said, Plenty of folks I've talked to foresee Mike Tyson blazing out of the gates looking to overwhelm the relative neophyte in mine at one. Then, surprised by Paul's chin and ability to hang in, those legs and lungs bark at Mike Tyson, reminding him that it's bullshit when people say age is just a number. Jones noted that if the fight progresses beyond the first round, it starts to get interesting. And if it extends to the fourth round, it becomes even more intriguing. Jones added, Mike Tyson is still a formidable puncher. This is fun, I love it. If it gets out of the first round, it gets interesting. By round four, if it's still going, it will be very interesting. Additionally, during a previous appearance on the Joe Rogan Experience podcast, Roy Jones Jr. disclosed intriguing insights into the immense challenge that comes with confronting Mike Tyson. I'm pretty sure I can get a little bit more ready than he can because he's been inactive a lot longer than I have. Yeah. So six weeks, I know it's Mike Tyson, he's big as heck and he's still Mike Tyson and he still can punch, but six weeks, there's no way he can get prepared for this. Conversely, Campbell Hatton has expressed concerns about Mike Tyson's upcoming return to the boxing ring. Hatton suggests that Tyson's punch resistance may have weakened over his nearly 20-year break from the sport. The undefeated rising star offered his thoughts on the highly anticipated bout. Hatton told Mail Sport, I think it's sad to see. It's not something I'm looking forward to. I think when people see the videos of Tyson training where he's smashing the pads and the body belt and things like that, he still looks like a monster still. However, Hatton thinks that people are greatly underestimating the strain of undergoing training camps and retaining the ability to withstand punches placed on an individual, especially for someone approaching their late 50s. He added, But I think people are really underestimating the toll it takes on you going through training camps and punching resistance for anyone, never mind somebody in their late 50s. Hatton expressed firm belief that if the fight were solely about trading blows, Tyson would prevail effortlessly. However, he stressed that the reality is more complex. Hatton remarked, There's no doubt in my mind if it was just about going in there and exchanging punches, Tyson would overpower him. But it's not that straightforward. Reflecting on his performance towards the end of his career in the early 2000s and late 90s, it appeared his ability to absorb hits had diminished. Over two decades later, it's unlikely to have gotten better. Moreover, Hatton expressed regret that the new audience attracted to boxing by YouTube events may not have witnessed Tyson's heyday. 
He suggested that they might form a skewed perspective if they witness him losing to Jake Paul, attributing such a potential loss largely to age factors. Hatton stated, I think it's regrettable because there's this new audience coming to boxing via YouTube bouts who likely haven't seen Tyson in his prime. They'll watch this, and there's a substantial chance Jake Paul defeats him primarily due to age, and I fear many of those younger viewers won't appreciate just how exceptional Tyson was. Overall, the upcoming bout between Mike Tyson and Jake Paul transcends mere entertainment, unfolding into a tapestry rich with history, rivalry, and the passage of time. It serves not only as a resurgence of Tyson's indomitable spirit, but also revives a storied feud with Evander Holyfield, albeit indirectly through his association with Jake Paul. This confrontation brings to the fore not only the raw physicality of boxing, but also the intricate dance of legacy, mentorship, and the relentless march of time. Mike Tyson's vehement reaction to Holyfield's involvement with Paul underscores a fragile truce between two titans of the sport, revealing underlying tensions and unresolved past conflicts. This is more than a fight, it's a reflection on the sport's evolution, the impact of social media, and the changing nature of celebrity within boxing. As July 20th approaches, the world waits with bated breath, not only for the outcome of the match, but for the unfolding narratives, the rekindling of old rivalries, and the potential for new legends to be written. This is not merely a contest of strength, but a moment in history, capturing the essence of boxing's past, present, and future. It's a stark reminder that in the ring, as in life, nothing is ever as straightforward as it seems. So that's all from today's video. If you enjoyed it, remember to leave a like, subscribe, and ring that bell icon so you never miss our upcoming videos.